Well, once again, I've lost my, kim my gimbal. It's really frustrating. I now should keep it in the same place. And normally, with anything, I keep it all in the same place. Um, but not the gimbal. Uh, I really don't know where it is. I'm trying to shut the gate now, which is why you've got a view of the compost bins. Because the sheep will come through. Okay. I was going to do... We're going into... Um, our local town, San Savan, and um, I was thinking of doing a vlog because it's beautiful, but I need to do that on my own. And if it's Mark and I and we're walking, I want to be able to, you know, we talk when we're walking, and that wouldn't really be very private, would it? So I thought I'd do you a little autumn tour of the garden whilst trying not to fall down molehills. Um, what did we decide this was? Ceanothus? Or something else but anyway I've noticed um, bird activity in there so you know the berries are already going down well and um, it's a beautiful day it's going to be cool um, I'm sure it was cooler I can just see mist still coming off the long grass over there and um, there's still leaves on the trees but they're all coming down Really pretty time of year. To remind myself when winter really sets in and um, look how pretty these are. These are the leaves from the um, cherry blossom. It was very pretty. Got quite a few leaves on it. I have to remind myself when we, when, you know, like in January, February and even March when there are no leaves on the trees and it's very cold and the, the the landscape's very what's the word bleak the landscape's very bleak I have to remind myself that this is what we have that's pretty I have no idea what that is it's just there and um, of course all underneath all of these shrubs you'll find these bare branches because the sheep graze on anything. So it, all at that height, you know, you find your, all your shrubs have got that sort of shelf on them. There's a pile of pallets over there that will be burnt at some point. Um, Ludo came the other evening, Wednesday evening, and um, we've got it's still that clearing to do from when we had the um all the all the garden clearing done and um which we'll head over to it's over there somewhere and he's going to carry on and he's going to burn it the big pile that never got to the deschettery it's um it's illegal to have bonfires in france it used to be okay, and then, you know, obviously if you were sensible and it was at the right time of year. So we often had a bonfire just here. Um, Mark's a bit keen with bonfires, so they're normally a bit big. And it doesn't matter how many times I say to him that's a bit big. But if that's too big, he ignores me. So quite often the flames would go up and up and up, and they'd be in that tree. I mean, that branch, that branch there is quite low now, but, you know. It was quite worrying. There's the sheep over there trying to keep warm in the sun. And the chickens aren't at at. That is a British comedy, comedian who says at at. Mickey, Mickey Flanagan, I think his name is. So they're not out of this door. And they're not even in this run because this run is very open to um, wild birds and I'm not really sure, I probably will let them out into here because this is where they are, this is there in the run that they're in now also with pallets that need burning and um, that's open to wild birds as well really because of all the trees and, you know, it's big. I can't imagine. Well, um, actually, I say I can't imagine. We'd have to spend a lot on netting because 
these holes bird, little birds can get through. I've watched birds get through. The only thing now with the new netting that we put along the front here the birds can't get through there into the feeder so that might be um, that's probably the best thing so sadly the chickens are very restricted but they actually have loads of room I mean this is you know compared to some standards of chicken housing they have a lot of room they've got all of this run and then they've got all of that I mean that's a garage isn't it garage size inside so they can they're actually it's, it's luxury luxury i tell you isn't it anyway i'm sure that i will give in and let them come out here at some point but for now it's, a, it's such a shame and it could be months the avian flu thing Pompey. so yeah they're not they're at but not at at Mickey Flanagan, you need to look at him. Look him up and see what I mean. Pretty, no? Now the sheep, when they're sheltering from the rain, will come in here. The dirty side, the dirt, messy side, which I tidy up now and again and then it gets untidy again. I, what's the point? I haven't swept the floor recently, as you can see. Lol. Um... So when it's raining they go in there and they could come in here but oh no and I'd clear up in here sometimes and this stuff gets dragged around and put back on the floor and we need to just take it all and take it away so yeah we made this in mock we made this into a sheep shelter when we first got the sheep because somebody said oh you know then you need to put them under cover at night and you need to feed them so we bought food for them and so you know mark used pallets as you can see to make a divide to sort of you know make it easier and we had three sheep at that time because we had the ram and a gate so he made a a gate that closes they went absolutely mad there was no way they wanted to be locked away. I've watched the ram ramming the gate. Um, so the only time they get locked in there is when Ludo's coming to shear them and we entice them in. But we entice them in about an hour before he's coming so that they're not too stressed by it, although they are stressed. So they just, you know, you think they would remember, you know, they get so hot because he doesn't do them till at least late May because they live outside. And um so they get really hot and uncomfortable. So you'd think they'd think, oh yeah, Ludo's here. But no, they don't like it. Anyway, that's them. So when Ludo comes to have his bonfire, he's gonna take some of this Laurier out. It's a big laurel hedge, it's called Laurier. Gonna clear back over here. And I expect he'll take some of these chestnuts. He'll probably do a bit of pollard. Uh, not pollarding. Well, what's the other thing you do? Not pollarding. Coppice. Coppicing. Because he'll probably take out some of those and leave a couple. He's pretty good at doing that. And we'll have all of it. He'll chop up into um, 50 um, centimetre pieces for um, the fire. So all of that will be chopped up. There's quite a lot there, so he'll leave the left-hand one that's more straight and take out the ones that are laying over. And he's going to... This was when we had the hedge cut two or three years ago, and um, all the hedging was, the clippings were put over this side, and um, I think he'll try and burn that as well, and clear that, which is just a load of bramble, so hopefully it'll begin to look like this. I mean, I don't know what we're going to do. This used to be the potager, but it'll be nice to have it cleared and then maybe I'll grow a few pumpkins. Um, certainly not going to make it back into a potager. Neither of us are up for... You have to spend every day out there weeding because you, as soon as you walk away from your planting, it looks lovely and then if you don't keep up with the weeding, you're stuffed. I'll have you know that I'm doing very well not falling over because I'm watching what I'm filming rather than where I'm walking and this garden is full of molehills. Um, 
Not sure what that is. Thorny. Um, it's a rose, I think. It's probably an old rose. I don't know. I think there's a, an hibiscus here somewhere, which could be this behind it. Yeah, I think that's the hibiscus. Yeah, so this is all clear. Looking good. That's our neighbour's garage barn that we're, you know, on the back of. A nice neighbour. Well, nicer neighbour. This is the pile for the bonfire. Which would be great if he burns that. Be lovely. Get rid of it. Get the garden tidy. Can you see that cobweb on there? I think you can. Don't have a closer look at the cobweb. I bet there's no spider in it. No, I can't see a spider. No. Hiding somewhere. So yeah, loads of leaves here. We don't clear leaves up. Most of the leaves are under the chestnut tree over there now. Bamboo stays like that all year. So that's quite nice. It's, you know, everything else has died back. All the leaves have gone off the trees. And the ch bamboo just stays green. The only thing bamboo struggles with is if it doesn't get water, it, um, the leaves close up and it begins to go a bit yellow. Or if we have loads of rain, it bends down in the rain, it, you know, it gets really heavy. And likewise, if we have snow, it gets, it leans over a little like that one. Um, it leans over and, um, but it recovers, it's amazing, it just recovers. More pallets. A wood is delivered on pallets and then we end up with pallets and because we haven't got most people in France have got remorks, trailers, and, and we haven't. And um even if we had, neither of us can neither this is the walnut. Got all the leaves off that. Um neither of us neither of us can reverse a trailer. Or reverse with a trailer on. So it would be useful sometimes to have a trailer but and I suppose we could have learned how but we didn't what's the view down the garden back to the chicken shed and the tree the ceanothus and the um, cherry blossom and a load of leaves there on the ground underneath the chestnut tree I'm gonna go around the front I can't get in around the front because it came out the back. The front's still locked. This is part of our foss, foss septic, septic tank. All of that plumbing bit, all the piping there was redone by Mark um, some of it when we first arrived because it had blocked and our family were here oh it was horrible I won't talk about that quite in depth I won't give you a blow by blow account but Mark spent a couple of days coping with that dealing with that resorting rejigging and then I think he had to do it again I don't know, several months later or a year later. And having sorted it, it's fine. So we don't look at it, we don't think about it. Um, so there's a holding tank under there where everything goes into and then there's another tank over here somewhere and then there's a clean water run down there. But let's not talk about that. Fosseptique is a whole vlog in its own right. Okay. Oh, that wasn't closed. Or locked, anyway. Don't think the sheep knew it wasn't locked. 
Let's see if I can do it now. Right. So here's the front. All the leaves off the magnolia now. I'm hoping it will flower this year. It didn't flower and I've been fleecing it. I think I rubbed all the, any flowers I got rubbed off underneath the fleece, so that's not going to get fleeced this year. It'll stay like that. There's already buds on it. Um, the oleander really didn't get going this year. They got planted into the ground again. They're going to be left to their own devices and hopefully next year they'll pick up really quickly. There's a fig tree. This fig tree is never going to grow. <sighs> Kept getting eaten by sheep out the back. Eventually we moved it. Nothing really grows in this front bit apart from the cherry tree that grew here and was here for 60 odd years and um, started to rot and was, the house was at risk so we had to take it down. I say nothing grows, actually we planted this mixed hedging several years ago at the back there so that has grown. Bamboo out here just to give us a bit of a screen in pots so that really struggles if it doesn't get watered and we've not had any rain so it's all right at the moment but, um, restricting it in pots is not great but it's just to give us a bit of a visual barrier from you know who and we cleaned off the front of the house the other day i'm really pleased i did that cleared a, i was going to buy some plants yesterday to put at the front here just to you know, for winter to make it look pretty, but I couldn't find any. I'll have a look today, maybe. We ate one of the pumpkins yesterday when Joe and Jerome were here. Yeah. Smoke coming out of the chimney. Aeroplanes in my sky. Voila. Okay, that's the tour of the garden. And now I've got to go out and post a letter. Have a good day.